guys what is going on welcome back to another video today's video is going to cover a topic that is near near and dear to my heart it's a topic that I have been interested in for years in fact you know since I can remember I was interested in this topic and how to create wealth through property investment the reason I was into it so early and thinking back now you know I'm 27 now I've bought a couple of properties but thinking back you know, when people do ask me, okay, how, how did you first get involved with property? Why did you start looking at property for an investment opportunity? You know, who got you into property? And that was my dad. All right, it was seriously my dad. From, from an early age, he hustled. He really did. You know, he was on an average income his whole entire life. He never had anything special. But he put every single dollar he made into property, either buying a property and holding, or buying a property, putting money into it, and then, and then flipping it. So early on, you know, we, we moved different to different house after different house because obviously they were they were just moving up in the ranks, you know, buying this property, doing it up a bit, selling it, buying a more expensive property, doing it up a bit, selling it. So that was their strategy. When they broke up, everything got split and basically, you know, it all got halved and any dreams that they had, my, my parents, of owning multiple rental properties, you know, having a, a life of financial freedom was cut short unfortunately due to the divorce so regardless of that early on I got the notion of property investment I got the notion of being able to make money through property and I started thinking about interest rates I, I was good at maths when I was a kid so I started calculating interest rates I started calculating how much this would cost to pay this mortgage as opposed to how much I'd get for rent and I'd start working out well shit I could if I had twenty thousand dollars you know as a ten year old I was thinking shit if I had twenty thousand dollars I could buy that property I could rent it out I could make money each week and I could save another twenty thousand and do the, do it again and do it again and do it again I mean at that point I didn't realize that once you did gain equity in a property that you own you can actually use that I mean you can refinance that property take the equity out without having actually used any of your own money and um, and go and buy another property so once you've got that first one things change and thinking about that you know people seem to get to that first property that that one investment property and stop especially in Australia I think something crazy like 85 or 90 percent of all owners of residential investment property in Australia have only one investment property I think something like 5% have two 3% have three and I think 1% have four or above, or something crazy like that. So, you know, statistics are fine, but let's, let's look at that for a second. What is happening? People are buying one, possibly making the wrong decision, and not being able to continue with that property dream, you know, that I'm talking about, to, to buy multiple properties. If you make that wrong decision on the first one, you can really, really set yourself up for five to 10 years of just chasing your tail. So. Regardless of that, that's how I was introduced to the property market. That's how I started doing figures in my head. That's how I started imagining my financial freedom, my financial dream. And so when it came time to leave school and get a job, I was just like the rest of you at 17, 18. I had all this knowledge, I just had no money. Okay, my parents were not going to buy me my first property. They were not going to buy me my first car. They were not going to buy me my first anything. And I think those fundamental values and the way that brought me up definitely set me up for a good future, a good financial future, or at least a good financial understanding of money and the value of money. So I left school, I I couldn't see I couldn't see myself buying a property within the next couple of years. My my you know income wasn't very good. I was just out of school when I thought, you know what? What's the second best option? A car. Everyone wants a car when they leave school. So I bought a car. I bought it on finance. Okay, I was pretty pretty good with my money. I'd saved up a little bit. I had my job for a year. I was 18. I was eligible for a loan. So what did I do? I went and got a loan. Bought the car. It was a fantastic car. I fucking loved it. Probably had about three months worth of good times. Lo and behold, what, is all eight, what do all 18-year-olds go and do when they've got a nice flash car? They go and crash it. 
Well, unfortunately guys, I wasn't able to escape that either. So I crashed my car, I rode it off, I had no insurance. So by age 19, I was in New Zealand, I had my shitty job, I had a $10,000 loan for a car that I didn't have. I'd lost my license, so I couldn't drive anyway. And you know, everything was everything was just going south. Everything felt like everything felt like it was you know, the whole world felt like it was against me to be honest, especially that car thing. At the age of 18 having such an awesome car, having some great times in it and then writing it off and having nothing to show for it, having a shit job having a $10,000 loan and not even knowing how the hell I'm going to pay for it, it was pretty depressing. So, what do I do? I say fuck it to the loan, I say fuck it to the house, I say fuck it to all of my financial dreams and say, you know what, I'm going to uni because it's the easy option, okay? I always thought I'd go to uni but I didn't know what I wanted to do. So, at age 19 with my debt, etc, I was still living at home, I couldn't move out, I had no money, I went to uni. Four months later, I'm 19, I'm about at 19 and a half, four months later I decide, nah, uni's not for me. So I quit uni, I decided, no, there's too much opportunity cost that I'm missing out on here. If I spend three or four years at uni, come out of it with a degree that I don't even want to use, I'm going to be in a worse position than I am now. So I had to make that decision early, which was not easy, it was hard because I still, I came out of uni with a debt as well. So I had my $10,000 car loan, and <laughs> for a car that I didn't have. And I had a $10,000 uni loan for a degree that I didn't have. So here we are, $20,000 in debt, a shitty job, well no job actually, because I quit my job to go to uni. I left uni, tried to get my job back, couldn't get my job back. Mate, it was, it was shitty times. And then comes the big turning point in my life where I moved to Australia. I moved countries at the age of 19. I left all my friends, all my family, and moved from Christchurch in New Zealand and moved all the way to the middle of Australia to Alice Springs where I, where I still am today. Unbelievably, eight years later, or just about eight years later. So I've been in Australia now for seven and a half years and it took me probably a good three years to get my feet on the ground and to get those debts that I had paid off and to start getting you know, off the week to week cycle because, you know, being week to week, guys, you just can't see a future. You can't see any sort of financial future living week to week on a paycheck, scraping through to that ne next paycheck. And unfortunately, until you do what I did, you're going to stay in that situation. You're going to stay paycheck to paycheck. You're never going to be able to save any money. You're never going to be able to buy property. And you're just going to accept that life where well, you don't have to, all right? You don't have to. Before I go on, I'm not a financial advisor. Take what I say as entertainment and on face value because this is my experience, this is what I've done. But, you know, these things that I'm trying to tell you, that my experience, I'm hoping, hoping that I can really connect with some of you guys out there and help your dream of financial freedom start, all right? Because that's what we want to do. We want to get financially free so we don't have to work every single motherfucking day for the rest of our life okay so anyways i came to australia it took me three years to get my to get my feet on the ground here i am in australia as a 23 year old um no money still no money in fact all i had was debt i had a credit card which was maxed out and i was still doing administration jobs so all of my jobs up until i got up until the point that i got my current job right now i was doing admin so i was doing computer work i was printing, photocopying, emailing, Excel spreadsheets, all sorts of shit like that. I'm a fast typer, so it worked, but the reality is I was never ever gonna get paid anywhere over $50,000 a year. And for me to buy a property, as well as live, as well as save money, as well as go traveling, do everything I wanted to do, it wasn't gonna work. So I had to take a leap of faith. I had to leave the job and the industry that I was very, very comfortable in, and I started disability support work, believe it or not. So four years ago, guys, I started disability support work over four and a half years ago. And it was the best move I ever made. It really was. Not only the job, I enjoy it, but, but let's not beat around the bush. The reason I did that was for financial reasons. So I entered into this job with no expectations. All I knew was that I was keen to work. I knew that I could get penalty rates for Saturday, Sunday, and night shift 
it was a shift work position. I'd never done shift work. I'd never done 12 hour shifts. But what appealed to me was the fact that, okay, well if all I want is the most money possible, I can get overtime for doing weekends. I'm quite prepared to do that. I can get overtime for doing night shifts. I, I'm quite prepared to do that. And if I was to do just four of the seven days a week, I'd have 48 hours in the bank. That's 96 hours per fortnight. Each fortnight you get paid a salary on 76 hours. Anything over that, you get paid overtime. Plus it was a government job, which is the reason why you get all these penalties and overtime rates. Most government jobs, guys, whether you're in Victoria, South Australia, Western Australia, fucking Queensland, doesn't matter where you are, most government jobs you'll find will be Monday to Friday, eight till four, you get no opportunity for overtime, you get no opportunity to work the weekends, nothing. So guys, I've got to say, I struck it lucky, man, to find a government position within the, the uh, Department of Health, Office of Disability. I found a government position that allowed me not only to get my salary, but to also work all those extra hours. And for about two years, for, honestly, for the, for the first two years, I came into that position when they were really, really struggling for staff. In fact, to be honest, four and a half years later, we're still struggling for staff. But those first two years, we hustled, man. The team that started with me just hustled. We were there every day, 12 hour shifts, man. Five, six days a week. And we were just hustling. We were getting 100, 110, 120 hours per fortnight. And no, I wasn't sleeping much. I was working. But I had that vision in my head from way, way back, way back, that I want to get to financial freedom. I want to buy my first property. And that is all I cared about. So. You know, it, it made me happy to go to work. It really did because I knew I had a vision, I had a goal, I was working towards it. And I was loving it. I was loving life. I was loving seeing my bank, bal bank balance finally start going up. Um, I wasn't living week to week anymore. You know, the first week, the first paycheck that came into my account where I didn't actually think for a week beforehand, oh shit, I can't wait to get paid, I can't wait to get paid. To look at my account and see shit, I got paid and not actually have to think about it because you're comfortable now. It's amazing. It really was an amazing feeling. So from there guys, here we are four and a half years later, after two years of hustling my ass off in that job, I was able to save enough money to buy my first property. And how did I do it? First thing, I had to leave my current position. I had to leave my, my comfort zone of administration. I moved into a new field. I found a job that I could hit some overtime. I found a job that I could get penalty rates. I found a job that suited my life, suited my gym you know, schedule, suited my sleeping schedule with the, the shift work. And I just went, went for it. I did. At the same time, I was learning. I was learning, 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 learning. I was watching podcasts. You know, at the time I was doing cardio for, you know, cutting body fat. And every single time that I went for a walk, every time I went for a run, I'd always put on a property investment podcast. And I've got to say, I, le I learned a shitload off of two channels. One is an Australian guy called Nathan Birch, Be Invested. And another one is an American channel called Bigger Pockets, which is a podcast. Even just, just getting your head around the real estate jargon, you know, different words, you know, conveyancer, rental return, landlord's insurance, everything like that, you know, body corporate, understanding things. So then you can sort of start researching properties, you can look at properties, you can look at the numbers, and you can start doing your research, you know? And once you've got that deposit in the bank, it is scary. It's scary putting that much money into an investment that you don't exactly know what's gonna happen. But look at history, guys. You know, history repeats. Looking historically at the Australian property market, it's gonna continue going up. So that is the investment vehicle that I've decided to use for myself going forward. Anyways. First property I bought when I was 24 and a half. My second property I bought when I was 25. I'm 27 years old right now. I've just had my first daughter and we're on the way to buying my third. So I've taken a little break the last couple of years. In fact, geez, even with all that overtime that I'm talking about, it has slowed down a bit. I sort of, after the second property, I took my foot off the gas a bit because I had, you know, I tired myself out, man. I really had. So now I'm sort of getting my you know, getting my life back into a bit of a schedule. I've got my daughter Tate, I've got my girlfriend, we're living in a nice house right now. It's time to start hustling again. It really is. So going forward guys, just know that my financial goal is to buy a third investment property. 
Now the last thing that I want to mention, if I left without having told you this, I'd feel like I let you down. The fact is, is that yes, the big banks are the ones that you see advertised all the time. They're probably the ones that offer the lowest interest rates as far as loans go. But the big banks are never going to be able to give you that one-on-one -on -one customer service. They're never going to know your name. You know, all you're going to be to the big banks, the big four, is a statistic. And that's not what you want when you're talking about home ownership, when you're talking about investing your hard-earned cash. You know, if if anything, you know, I'd, I'd want you to go to a broker for a start, someone you trust. If you don't know a broker personally and you don't know someone who can sort of shop around for you, I'd say go to a smaller bank. If anything, if you don't know anyone in the banking industry, if you don't know anyone in the broking industry, go to a smaller bank. Go to go somewhere where you can sit down with a bank manager. The bank manager doesn't have a huge uh, you know, portfolio of clients. You can actually sit down, someone local, um, and, and, and start talking about it. Say, what do I need? What do I need to buy a property? What do I need to buy this property? You know, even just do a bit of research. Grab a property, take it in, and say, what do I need to buy this particular property? Run through the numbers with the bank manager. You'll leave there with an answer, right? There's, there's no point in, in guessing in this shit. There is no point. Because you'll just sit there going round and round in circles, wondering, 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 do I have enough money? How much money do I need? Blah, 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 blah. Go to the bank, find out, and start moving towards your goal. I'm sorry I've been waving around this pen, but it actually helps me talk, believe it or not. So anyways, I want to say, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something from it. If you are looking at buying your first investment property or you're back at the stage that I was back in New Zealand, you know, it's all it's all a journey. It's all a stage of life, all right? You'll get there. You'll get there, but don't take too long because property value is only gonna continue to go up. So with that said, guys, I'll see you in the next one.